the crew responds to a box alarm. The crew of Engine 4 arrive on scene to a box alarm. Technician Hosea Sampson inquires as to the location of the fire from one of the residents of the complex. More members of this battalion arrive on scene. The crew drags in the lines. The hallways of the apartment complex are filled with smoke as the firefighters move in. When I came out of the academy, uh, I was appointed here at Engine 4. This is where I started and this is where I've stayed my entire career so far. So. Did, did my probation here, obviously, and I've been here for uh, eight years now. Since then, I've become uh, on this platoon. I'm the senior guy on the back step. During my probation, it was, it was a big change uh, coming from a volunteer company, coming up to, this, to the city. Uh, I know before I worked here, I, I was actually career um, with uh, City Manassas for about five years. And even before that, I was, uh, I was career in, uh, in the department in South Carolina. But this was a lot different. This was uh, high speed. It was um, uh, the the tactics were different. The way things uh, we did were a lot different. Uh, I had really good teachers. I had a lot of good teachers. Wagon driver was an excellent teacher. I had a, an excellent lieutenant that taught me a lot. So I had a lot of help along the way, and so it was fun. It was a lot of fun. burning our food on the stove. Grease fire. It's out. <laughs> Firefighters O'Burn and Kelleher carry the lines back to the wagon. station, a call comes in for an auto accident. Ambulance 
Intelligent communication has everything. When the crew arrives, they find the call to be a multiple car accident with one victim trapped inside of her vehicle. Squad 1 was already on scene when Engine 4 arrived. Firefighter Kelleher pulls a line in case the car goes off. Chuck Ford joins Squad 1 on scene. The story from one of the witnesses is that the young lady was pulling out of McDonald's drive through into the street when she was T-boned by the Suburban. When I became an actual official member of the, of the company uh, after I got off probation, um, it was uh, a pretty good feeling. Uh, the whole time you're on probation here, it's pretty tough, especially on, on this platoon that I got assigned to, and uh, especially at this station. Um, it's known for being you know, one of the good stations in the city. So uh, my probation consisted of not only the normal studies, but uh, pretty much anything extracurricular you could think of. I mean, I had to know more streets than I was required to know for my probation tests. I had to know uh, exactly how we operated, how many lines we pulled on certain buildings, what kind of line we pulled on certain buildings. And um, I think my, you know, the officer and the guys, the senior guys here, especially in the wagon driver especially, you know, they, uh, they pushed me to uh, know more than I was required to know by the city. So uh, once I finally got off that, that status and got to be a regular member, I felt like, you know, I accomplished something. So it was good. The woman is pinned in by the steering wheel and the crushed in driver's door. The Squad 1 crew brings in the extrication tools and immediately goes to work. uses the spreader on the door and then uses the O-cutters to remove the door completely. They cut off the hood and the rooftop of the car for better access to the patient for her safe removal. Gurney is moved in so as to package the victim up in preparation to transport her to the hospital for further treatment.
The top of the car is peeled back, and the firefighters carefully remove the victim from the car and place her onto the gurney. The victim is packaged up and now wheeled off to the AMBO for transport. The Engine 4 crew wrap their lines and prepare to head back to the hornet's nest. The crew responds to a medical local. Well, once I started my probation here, I had uh, Lieutenant Benson, who was a great, great lieutenant. You know, he taught me all the ins and outs of the job, you know, which I had no problem with. Uh, I had several experiences on the job. When I first came in, actually, I was in my probation. I was uh, working over in Southeast. We had a lady who was uh, actually T-boned from the rear trying to remove her spare tire, changing her tire. And it was just, she was knocked down into the embankment and me and my company, we had to retrieve her from the embankment. And just moving her from the embankment to the stretcher, I mean, her legs was just like jelly and it was just, it was, it was a, trauma, a traumatic experience for me, but it was, you know, a job that I still was able to do. And it's just, that, that's just what the department is about. Is you, you're going to be faced with a lot of traumatic experiences. It's just, you know, how well you adapt to them and overcome. Firefighters Ian O'Byrne, Tony Kelleher, and Lieutenant Mike Basinger move into the apartment complex with their medical packs. One of the family members waits at the front door to let the crew in and lead them to the apartment where they are needed. Uh, sure, I can remember uh, I probably, it was probably my second night on the job and I remember running a call uh, and it was for a, uh, a person shot. And I get there and uh, basically the, the whole back of this male's head is blown out and there's brain matter everywhere and I just remember thinking you know this is it I mean you can see it on television you can see when you see it live there it's a whole different perspective so it was like it was you know 
quick learning. I had to learn the job quickly. So. Who enters the apartment and finds blood splats on the carpets. They enter the bedroom and find a blooded man unconscious on the bed. The resident claims the man is a diabetic and must have fallen to the floor. A DC fire and EMS medic team arrives and checks the victim's vitals and prepares to take them to the hospital. The victim's story loses its validity when he fights with the first responders. They just want to take him to the hospital for further evaluation. He may be on prescription drugs. The crew finally gets him to cooperate, and they wheel him out of the apartment and out to the ammo for transport.
Morning. Firefighter Tony Kelleher leaves the Engine 4 Station House to return to his home, where he is the chief of the 100% volunteer Kentland Fire Company. My dad, he's a police officer in Arlington, Virginia, which is just across from uh, Washington, D.C., right across the Potomac River. Uh, it's home of like the Pentagon and a lot of uh, other famous places, the Iwo Jima Memorial. But uh, he's been a police officer there for just about 30 years. Um, so that's, that's where I grew up as well. Um, my dad's always been in the fire department. He was uh, real big into fire department history and tradition. And uh, you know, he kind of got me into it when I was a real little kid. Take me to all the firehouses in Arlington and, and other places, uh, and we'd uh, you know, meet the guys and stuff like that. So I always, you know, I've always been around the fire department since I was real young. Um, so much that you know, I kind of fell in love with the DC fire department uh, at a real early age, and I would sneak away from my house when I was about 13 or 14 years old and take the uh, subway system over to DC. And of course, I told my parents I was going to my friend's house, and uh, you know, I kind of made a bunch of friends over here. At a very young age, I used to ride uh, on Engine 16 in Truck 3 um, downtown uh, just because, you know, back in those times, you know, anybody could pretty much ride along. Uh, I kind of became uh, a junior member of the crew, if you will, and, uh, you know, would hang out there on certain platoons and got to know the job real well because they would teach me everything. And I would kind of watch and hang out and always, you know, t take pictures or stand back and watch and see how things were done. So it kind of helped out when I got hired down here that, you know, I already knew the system and I kind of already knew where most of the stations were and how things worked. So it definitely helped in me becoming a volunteer firefighter in Prince George County at Kentland and then it helped me once I got hired in D.C. to, to you know, be on my game. 